Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to introduce an important concept in machine learning, bias and variance. Now, bias and variance are two different ways of measuring error in machine learning models. Now, let's first define bias. So, bias is the difference between the expected prediction of our model and the correct value. Suppose we predict something and then the correct value of that data point is different. We examine the difference and then we report that difference as the bias. And typically when we calculate bias, we repeat for different data sets and measure how far off the predictions are from the current value for all the different data sets and then return the total bias of the model against the data. Now, what is error due to variance? Now, variance gives something really interesting. It is the variability of our model's predictions for a given data point. So, the data point is the same, but each time we run the model, are we getting a different prediction for this particular data point? And if we are getting different predictions, how what is the variance of these predictions how variable are these predictions and that is what is measured by variance now imagine we want our prediction to be right and we also want to be able to reproduce our predictions every single time we run the model suppose we have a model for once it is predicting correctly the second time it's predicting wrong that's not a great model. That's not a model that we would like. And that dependability or reproducibility of the model is understood by examining variance. Now, this is another popular term in machine learning when we are learning bias and variance we can understand that there is a trade-off inherently between bias and variance. If, we, if a model has a high bias, generally it has low variance. And if a model has high variance, then it has low bias. So oftentimes we cannot improve both these metrics, bias and variance together to get a better model. So our model should trade-off between bias and variance in a way that we don't compromise on both these metrics but still achieve a good prediction performance and that is all we can manage and that's why this is called bias variance trade-off the complex models models which have many parameters and what would an example of such a model be svms with a really complex kernel that's a complex model Neural networks, many, many layers, many nodes in the hidden layers. That is a complex model. Perceptrons are a simple model. Naive Bayes, simpler side. Logistic regression, simpler, I would say, depending on the problem. Maybe a linear is still sufficient, but logistic regression is still on the simpler side, fewer parameters. So complex models have many parameters. So, uh, for example, we have neural networks, many, many hidden layers and many, many nodes in the hidden layers. Each of these links have weights. And as the network grows, the number of weights that you have to learn also grows. So complex models are generally associated with many parameters. So complex models usually have lower bias which means that when they predict, they are not too off from the correct value. So that's the definition of bias, right? When complex models predict, they can predict closer to the right value. Now that's not all what we want, right? Because we want to be able to do that every single time. We want to be have less variance in our predictions. Because if it is too different for each each time we run the model, then that's also a concern. 
and generally complex models have higher variance. Simpler models, on the other hand, perceptrons, simple neural networks, fewer layers, fewer number of nodes per layer, SVNs, simpler kernels, live base. So those are simpler models. They have fewer parameters, generally have higher bias in the sense that when you predict, they are off a lot from the right value. But they have low variance, which means that every time we run the model, we get more or less the same prediction value, which is gives the model a certain amount of dependability. To illustrate that, let's take these two models. We are going back to the example that we saw during overfitting. You remember, we saw a line versus a polynomial, right? Now, this is a simple model on the left, and a more complex model is on the right, a polynomial, a complex, higher degree polynomial. For a simple model, now, for a point that is occurring here, our prediction value is going to be on the model, right? So that's what we are we are predicting. So that's going to be here. So then this note that this is not a classification problem. Here we are considering a forecasting problem. So that's why I mentioned the overfitting video. So please look at that and don't confuse this with, with classification. Note that all the points are of the same color here. So it's not classification. So we are predicting on the line. We are forecasting data points and our Predicted data point is going to be on the line. So for this data point, the green uh, circle, this data point, this is the actual, right? This is the correct value. But we are going to be predicting here, and it's going to be off by this much. This is the difference. And this difference, what does this difference refer to? This difference is nothing but the bias right so every time we predict using this line we are going to have a point that occurs on the line so the line we know that how the line is going to progress it's it's very clear to us right so it's going to go in this direction like this so for the next data point we would predict here and here on the line and so on so there isn't really much variability in the models predictions right so for this for example let's go back because we already have the actual values for this other data point we know that it will predict here maybe there's a slight variability maybe it will predict here and here and so on so still the variability isn't much it's it's definitely less. So simple models have low variance, but high bias. Now let's shift our attention to complex models. Now for complex models, the curve has fit this data very well so it can fit the individual sample rather than the population so it has fit the individual sample pretty well so it's not really capturing any trend in the data but it has fit all these these data points now let's see here let's go focus our attention on the last data point now after this data point can we really understand how this curve is going to progress? Because that's what we will do when we are forecasting. We have these data points, we have fit a curve. Now we are going to use the curve for determining the value of future data points. Now it could go like this. It could also go like this. It could go like this. It could go straight up. It could go a 90 degree down can go here it is really unclear how this curve is going to progress because there is really no pattern to this curve 
It has fit all the data points perfectly. So this is very, this is a very complex model, right? And now, depending on how this curve goes, when we run it each time, we are going to get a different prediction. For example, if the curve goes on path one, we will get our prediction to be here. If the curve goes on path two, path three, and so on and so forth. Now, we can understand that this has way higher amount of variability in its prediction. So each time we run it, we are not sure how this curve is going to progress. And it's going to progress in one of these ways and give us a value, but we don't know which. So each time we are running this, we are in for a surprise. We don't know what it will choose and we will just find out when we run it. And now this model has definitely high variance. So a complex model, that's why, has usually a high variance in predictions. We are not really predicting in a smaller range here. But it could potentially have a low bias because it has learned all these points and fit that exactly to these points, right? So it's possible that this point, this this curve here would fit the point exactly and can give us low bias because it's inherently complex. And at least so far when we fit this curve, we have gotten a really low bias, right? We, it actually, the bias here is zero because it's not making any mistake. Well, the line on the left is making a number of mistakes. Um, so it's definitely low bias and high variance, which is a complex model. Now, to understand and also remember this better, um, I usually mentally recall this, this, these four diagrams here. So, low bias, low variance, low bias, high variance, high bias, high variance, and low bias, high variance, right? So all the four, sorry, high bias, low variance, all the four different ways in which we can combine bias and variance. Now, if let's say you are a really good dart player, you can play darts very well, you can always hit on the bull's eye, which means and hitting on the bull's eye is what we want, and that is the ex correct output, then if we always hit on the bull's eye, our bias will be low because we are always performing close to the right value. And now, because we are always hitting on the bull's eye around, like very near the red dot here, right? Now, our variance is also less so because when we take when you take the dart and throw it, you know you will hit the bullseye. So because you have great reproducibility, have very less variability, you are going to hit the bullseye. Now let's move to the next one on the right. Now when you, you can hit around the bullseye, but you're not really going always in the red circle, but you're going inside a few times. You're also going outside a few times, but you're not really far off. You're not really going in the white circle, outer circle. You're concentrated inside the inner white circle that's closer to the bull's eye. So it's around the bull's eye, which means still the bias is low. You are able to hit it near around the bullseye, but you have high variance because you sometimes can hit here, sometimes here, sometimes here, and so on. So there's definitely a high amount of variance, variance here. Now what happens if you have high bias but low variance? So you're always predictable in where you're going to hit. You're going to hit the blue circle, 
outside and also only at the top this place here so you are concentrated here which means you have less variance right so when you are going to use the dart to hit the board you are going to go and hit that blue circle but the correct one or at least for the purpose of understanding this is hitting the bullseye it's definitely far away from the bullseye but it's all in concentrated in that space so low variance very very predictable you are going to hit the blue part but unfortunately that's not what we want and we want you to hit the bullseye and it's away from the bullseye so you have high bias just the distance from the bullseye to where you're hitting but less variability because every shot that you are taking is going into the space all right so now all that remains is high bias and high variance for high bias you are definitely off from the bullseye you are going your wherever you're hitting is far away from the bullseye and you're also not predictable so you're going to go all over the place your darts are not really predictable and that's what happens when we have high bias and high variance now we want ideally a model that is here in in this low bias and low variance but since it's a trade off we often end up in one of these high bias or high variance scenarios and then we work towards the trade off to optimize for what we need 